Today, we want to talk about two major philosophical lines of thought, post-structuralism and post-modernism. But let's start with familiar traditions that shaped and still shape information science. Enlightenment, its humanism, its rationalism, and the effect of print culture. Those give way to certain assumptions we have about information science and knowledge organization. Namely, the notion that text has inherent fixed meaning, that true knowledge is possible and is cumulative, and that our role is a neutral one, not interested in meaning, only in excess. It's post-structuralism and post-modernism which challenge those assumptions. Post-structuralism builds on structuralism with its signifiers and signifieds, but rather than in language, is interested more in text and how text and its properties such as meaning work in broader social context. Key thinkers include Michel Foucault, Jacques Derrida or Roland Barthes. Post-structuralism sees text as being inside a network of relationships. No text is alone, and meaning is not a part of it. It stems from relationship with other texts. Text is bound by context, certain language patterns which are untraceable and to a great extent unconscious. There is no one true meaning, one true signified. Text is context, and context is text, and boundaries between those two are arbitrary. They cannot be separated. To quote Michel Foucault, text is a node within a network. Thus, unity of text is destabilized. This unity is important for major approaches to information in information science. But there is one more thing to consider. Power relations. Network is not neutral. Relationships between their parts are structured by power. Those power relations create discourse, the space of things which can be said. Discourse prioritizes some forms of knowledge while diminishing others. It structures the possible ways of expression. And according to post-structuralism, we cannot see objective reality, but our experience is necessarily conditioned by linguistic structures. This is the great challenge to main assumptions we talked in the beginning. Let's start with classification. Classification means overlaying certain structure above knowledge. This structure is not neutral, it's expression of power relations, their manifestation or creation. Different categorizations present different worldviews, different relationships between forms of knowledge in the network. There is no true knowledge to be found in text. Rather, structures we impose upon knowledge structure it. They limit, suppress this knowledge. And this may promote hegemonic point of view. The same case applies to paratexts, such as author, title and so on. They are not neutral, as rationalism assumes. They associate texts together and direct meaning. Given bibliographic data isn't a neutral process, those categories enclose certain assumptions. For example, just by knowing that some author wrote some book, it directs our interpretation of the particular book. Those categories thus necessarily regulate discourse and knowledge. Let's sum up how post-structuralism sees basic assumptions in information science. Diffused, unstable and contextual meanings decoupled from text itself instead of unity. Knowledge that is subjective and power structured instead of true objective knowledge. And work of information professional as caught in power relationships instead of ideal neutrality. Now it's time for postmodernism. Rather than on texts, It focuses on ways how culture and technology structure our very experience. It critiques traditional forms of knowledge, truth or progression. It challenges the values of enlightenment. Let's talk about three key thinkers. 
Jean-Francois Lyotard introduced the idea of meta-narrative. By that, he meant myths that we tell ourselves, internalize them and filter our experience through. Rationalism is such one narrative. Lyotard sees our age as being increasingly suspicious of those narratives. That results in mistrust in science or collective idea of progress. Postmodernity is fragmented into many individual experiences and knowledge is succumbing to profit motive. Jean Baudrillard's main topic is mediation. He coined the term hyperreality, which describes condition in which every aspect of our experience is mediated and true experience is nowhere to be found. We are under influence of advertising, which consists of signs without no real signified. Consider fashion brands that promote ideas that are in no relation to actual clothes. On example of Gulf War, Baudrillard shows that mediated fiction replaces the real events and imitation of real becomes more real than real itself. For Baudrillard, in today's capitalist society, information is decoupled from its meaning, and the more information there is, the less meaning there is. Information doesn't need meaning to be used as commodity. Francis Fukuyama is most famous for his term End of History. It described the ultimate win of American liberal democracy model and signifies the end of grand narratives. The best society organization model has been achieved and what lies beyond is political life that is not based upon big ideas but particularities. What have all those three thinkers in common? What's the result? It's fragmentation. Fragmentation of knowledge, of experience, of truth, of meaning. A sea of relativism. But let's return to information science. For postmodernists, meaning is one thing and information other. Meaning is arbitrary, culturally specific. This destabilizes the assumption of unity, which is illusory. We think that we act as neutral agents, given access to knowledge. But we participate in perpetuating dominance of some forms of knowledge above others. According to Tredenik, Postmodernism and poststructuralism doesn't give us answers or solutions, but they provide a way of looking at information science and practice critically. A bleak landscape emerges, the one where meanings of texts are unstable, knowledge is fragmented, and no categorization is neutral and no descriptors objective subordinated to power. The takeaway here is that maybe, as professionals, we should ask ourselves which values do we promote by our actions. We might be participating in holding an unfair discursive hegemony in place. We might be, or rather surely are, suppressing some knowledge and valorizing other. So please, let me finish our first slide. Foucault and Baudrillard walk into library. And Melville Dewey says, I haven't asked for this. Thank you. And here's a picture of Michel Foucault and his cat insanity. Who's in power? It's hard to judge.